Greetings, folks. In today's lab, we're going to look at some things that can go wrong in a lab. Oh, the excitement. So we're going to start with the circuit that we looked at in another video. A basic series DC circuit, three resistors, 18 volt support, uh, supply, 1K resistor, 2.2K resistor, 3.3K resistor. So we did some approximations on this. Right? You could do some very quick ballpark um, computations. We have a total, right, 1, 2.2, and 3.3K. We have a, a total of um, 6.5, 6.5K. And with an 18-volt source, right, you can figure out the current there, but the approximations we used relied on the voltage divider. So this 3.3 is about half of the total, because here we have another you know, um, 3.2K. So this 18 volt should drop about half of it, about 9 volts on this guy, and then the other 9 volts here. And since this is about 2 to 1, we would expect 6-ish volts here, and, you know, around 3. Not exact, but around there, okay? And we'll just do a real quick analysis just to bring us up to speed here. Right, do a table of results. So if I look at um, you know, R1, there we are, a little under 3 volts, right, 2.769. If we look at um, the 2.2K, there we are, a little over 6. And if we look at the 3.3K, there we are, just about 9, all right? So as expected. So you go in lab, you put this on your, on your uh, proto board, your breadboard, and you come in and start doing measurements. And that's what we would expect to see, right? put my DMM across here, and I'm expecting somewhere around 9 volts. Now, of course, in lab, you're not going to get exactly the values that we just computed because you're not going to have exactly a 3.3K or a 2.2 or a 1. You know, if you have, um, let's say, 10% tolerance parts, you know, silver band, then this is 1K plus or minus 10%. In other words, 1K plus or minus 100 ohms. So you might be 952 ohms. Right? Same thing over here with the 2.2. If that was a 10%er, it would be plus or minus 220 ohms. So maybe it's really 2.351K you know, or something like that. Those are going to shift your values, right? But let's say you get out your DMM um, and you measure something that's just like otherworldly. In other words, let's say you come across um, R3 over here. Instead of getting around 9 volts or maybe, you know, 9.5 or 8.7 or something like that because of tolerance, you know, you wind up with something tiny. You know, you wind up with like half a volt or maybe something huge. You wind up with, you know, 16, 17 volts, pretty close to the power supply. Or maybe you end up with zero. Or maybe you end up with, you know, the 18 volt source. All right. Um, where do you begin? What do you do? Well, there's sort of three things that would typically go wrong in a circuit like this. Um, sort of focusing on, focusing in on the resistors you could have accidentally shorted one of them or more. You could have accidentally opened one or more. And, um, of course, you could have put in the wrong value, right? So open, short, incorrect value. Um, the opens and shorts, basically what you do is you, you think of the resistor, if this was accidentally shorted, you just think of that as, as being zero ohms. You know, if, if you had accidentally opened the R3 over here, you just think of that as infinity ohms, you know, a billion D7 ohms, all right? And what ends up happening? Well, obviously, if you have a short, you're not going to get any voltage across it, right? If you think of that as zero ohms, think of Ohm's law, right? I times R is V. Well, any current times an R of zero is going to get you zero volts. So shorts always give you zero volts. Opens, on the other hand, basically prevent any current from flowing. So what would end up happening if, if you had, um, let's say, opened up R3 over here by accident, you would have no current flow, which means this drop would be zero and this drop would be zero. And all of the voltage, the 18 volts, would appear across the open. All right, okay, so like I said, just think of that as like a voltage divider where this is, you know, 11 gabillion ohms. Well, you do that as a divider between 2.2K and 1K, well, all the voltage is going to go across the 11 gabillion ohms. All right, so that's what you see with an open. Of course, you could have multiple opens. That complicates things a little bit. 
And then of course the meter that you're using has an internal resistance itself. So if you're using really high resistance values out here like mega ohm values, the internal resistance of the meter can actually play a role in, in the voltage that you measure. So that can, that can get a little tricky, okay? Well, how does that happen physically? Well, you know, a short very easily happens when you take a resistor and, uh, you know, get your protoboard out here. Well, I don't have a picture of one, but, you know, imagine get a protoboard and you have all of these, you know, rows, right? All of these rows of connections. And a very common thing is somebody will stick a resistor in one end of a row and they'll stick the other end of the resistor in that same row. So the, the contacts basically short out the resistor. Right? That's typically what happens. Opens typically, um, we're talking about, you know, one of the leads just being maybe one row over from where it should be. So it's not actually making a connection anymore, right? So those are fairly typical things. When circuits get more complicated, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to see, but you know, there it is, right? Okay, now what about the third thing, which is the component values, right? So the, the, the classic sort of error here is not checking your resistor value. What do I mean? Well, you go up to the um, bin, right? And it says 3.3K and you grab one and you come over here and you throw it in the circuit and you never bother to actually measure it, which again, you should do because you want to know exactly what that value is. You get your meter out and you measure the thing, right? Why accept a 10% tolerance? You know, if you have a silver band out here, when you have a, uh, a DMM that's maybe 1% accurate, right? You can drop that a whole order of magnitude. You know, the meter isn't perfect, but it's going to be more accurate than 10%, all right? So you should measure it anyway, but, you know, let's say you just throw it in there. Well, you know, the problem here is you're working in a shared lab. How do you know that the person that was just using uh, that resistor put it in the right bin, right? You got to trust everybody. Well, maybe you should be a little bit more careful than that. Or this happens. Sometimes you look at something and the color code Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between red and orange. You know, the shade is such that you can't quite be sure. All right. So, you know, I'm going to change the view over here. Since Tina does have this option, I'm going to use this enable 3D shapes. So we can actually see resistors. So here's, you know, our 2, 2.2K. Okay, so it's 2, 2, and then two zeros, right? 2, 2, 0, 0. So it's red, red, red. Here's my 3.3K, uh, right? So can't see it really good on this, on this uh, display, but you know, three is orange. So that should be right, three, three, zero, zero, or orange, orange, red. Well, what happens if you accidentally pop in orange, 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 right? So what's orange, orange, orange? Well, you got a, uh, an extra factor of 10 in there. So what ends up happening um, is instead of having a 3.3K, um, a you have a 33K. Well, what ends up happening when you start taking your measurements? All right, so I'm gonna pop in here. I'm gonna change this to 33K. Think about this for a sec, right? Remember what we were doing originally was a voltage divider. And we were saying, hey, at 3.3, I had a total of 3.2 here. Should get about half the voltage. What's gonna happen now? Remember Kirchhoff's voltage law. Right? This drop plus this drop plus this drop have to equal the rise of 18 volts. But R3 is a lot bigger now, right? I mean, R3 is now about 10 times the size of these other two resistors combined. So this is going to get like 90% of the voltage. Well, what's 90% of uh, 18 volts, right? We're looking at, you know, 16, 17 volts, right? 16 and change. Let's go check that. All right, so here's my R3, and there you go. That's saying it's 16.4, basically. And notice the current has, has uh, gone down considerably from what it was. And if we check the drop on R1, you know, that was a little less than three. Now it's about half a volt. Same thing's happening with um, the voltage on R2. Now it's only about a volt, whereas, you know, it was considerably higher than that in the original circuit. Right, so that's typically what would, what would happen. Now let's change this. 
and say that, um, you know, instead of 33K, what if it's only 33 ohms? Okay. So now this is a tiny little value compared to the other two. You know, how much of an impact is this going to have overall? Again, this is still 3.2K for that pair, only 33 ohms. Right. So, you know, we're talking percentage points here. I expect very, very little voltage here, you know, millivolts, basically. And I expect this 18 to drop mostly on these two at about a two to one ratio. All right. So, you know, what are we looking at? 12-ish, 6-ish? You know, this is obviously going to be a little bit more than two times this. But that's what we're looking at for a ballpark number. All right. So let's do our analysis. Okay, so our 33 is coming up here. We, uh, here we are looking at um, just 5 milliamps, 5.5 five milliamps in the circuit. I'm only getting 183, 184 millivolts, right, which is what we expected, a little tiny voltage. I look at R1 and, um, you know, about 5.5 volts, right? We were expecting a 2 to 1, about 6 and 12. And then for this guy, we're looking at uh, about two, uh, 12 and a quarter. All right, so that fits in perfectly perfectly for what we expected. And of course, if this was shorted, then this would be zero. You wouldn't even have millivolts here. Um, and like I said, if it wasn't open, we would have expected something really huge. So what I'm going to do here is, um, well, let's put in, I'm not going to say open, open, but let's say we have um, maybe 33 meg ohms. All right, that's... <laughs> That's almost open. You know, we should see nearly 18 volts there. And there you go, 17.998 volts. All right. Now, interestingly, if you came in here with a DMM and you measured this, you probably wouldn't get that 17.998. Um, you get a big number, but it probably wouldn't be quite that big. Maybe it would be, and it depends on the DMM, you might get uh, like 17 and a half, 17 and three quarters, because that meter itself has an internal resistance. Maybe it's one meg, two meg, five meg, but that actually gives a secondary path for current flow. Um, the current would be going through R2, and then it could actually split through R3 and through your DMM. So this is what we call DMM loading. Um, that can do some crazy things if you have a bunch of really big resistors. Uh, that's something that we would want to take a closer look at in a series parallel circuit, because by adding the DMM, we've actually created a new kind of circuit. Instead of being just series, it's what we call a series parallel. But more on that in the future. So to recap, three things can go wrong, typically in lab. Shorted components, in which case you're going to get zero volts, and they would tend to um, increase the circulating current. So the voltages on the other resistors would go up. You could have an open, so that reduces the current, ideally brings down to zero. Um, and of course, all of the voltage will drop across the open. The other resistors will have uh, no voltage drop. And then finally, um, you know, we have a, a, a component error, basically. We're putting the wrong resistor value in there, um, or maybe we set the power supply to a wrong value, and that ripples through everything. Right? That will change the current, that will change the voltage divider effects. Um, but it would still be true, right? KVL still has to be true that the drops on the resistors have to sum up to whatever that impressed voltage source is. All right, there you have it.